Hello everyone, welcome back. The Tank Commander is here again, and if you guys are seeing this, we are less than 10 days away from my cruise. That's right, we are into the single digits, baby. Nine days. <coughs> Nine. Can you believe that? If any of you have seen from the old series called Schoolhouse Rock, you've probably heard of this thing, the song called Naughty Number no. Nine. Well, in this case today, it's not the number nine, it's the number eight. Can any of you figure that out? <laughs> okay then, if you can't, well, we are celebrating because we have the winning vote from last night. RJ Nagel 2000, one of my viewers. Now, before I let this know, or let this out. I should let you guys know. RJ Nagel 2000 gets two votes because one vote comes from their husband. So, if anybody wants to try and win the next vote, get out there and start sharing it, people. And for those people associated with the Shenanigan Battalion, Mr. Bad Wolf, I'm calling upon you. <laughs> so, what are we starting with today? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they put the number in wrong, but... Oh yeah, this one is definitely for you guys in the Shenanigan Battalion. Ladies and gentlemen, what is this tank? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Panzerkampfwagen 8 Maus. The Panzer 8 Maus. This is what's known as the heaviest tank in the world. It is a super heavy tank. Now you're probably wondering why is it the heaviest? Well, now, the reason why I say heaviest is because it weighs so much. And the reason why is... Mainly because of its uh, its armor. I pull up the picture right now. This is a view from Armor Inspector, which is a map, or excuse me, an app that you guys can use for World of Tanks and World of Tanks Blitz to check the armor thickness of tanks. This tank's armor thickness is huge, but I'll come back to that later. Now, it is disputed how many tons this tank actually weighs. Well, there are three different ton levels. There's metric tons, imperial tons, and U.S. tons, or short tons. Metric tons, it weighs 188 tons. Long tons, it weighs 185 tons. Short tons, it weighs 207 tons. And that's checking latest views. It's been disputed over the years. Originally, I followed from a book that I have called German Secret Weapons of World War II, where it said that this thing weighed 189 tons. So... That tells you this tank weighs quite a bit. So you guys in the USA, like me, this is a 207-ton monster. Oh, that's real nice. Can you believe that? I never thought that there would be a tank that would break 207 tons here. Now, granted, our tons are of a 2,000-pound limit, so that should give you an explanation there. So, now many of you are probably wondering, why is it that this tank was built? Well, in 1943, when the Tiger I came into production, as, long as, as well as the Panther, Hitler began demanding for even bigger sets of tanks. The ones talking having main armaments bigger than 88 millimeters of 105 or 4.1 inches, or 128, which is like 4.2 inches, I believe. Anyway... These tanks were to be the biggest in the world. He wanted the biggest and the best. So they began showing, the, the people in Germany began designing new tanks to f fulfill these uh, issues and design uh, quotas. So what, his, what uh, Hitler's old friend, Dr. Ferdinand Porsche, did was he designed a, a wooden mock-up of this tank and it stunned Hitler and of course at the same time Henschel also put out uh, put out the next version of the Tiger the Panzer Sex Ausführung B the King Tiger as people know or the Royal Tiger or the Bengal Tiger or the Tiger Royal the Tiger 2 and what he said was I'm not sure if this is exact quoting but he said in this year, the Tiger and the Panther are the best. In 1944, the Mouse and the Tiger II will be the best. 
Well, as scheduled, the King Tiger came out on time. The first 45 models being produced with the Porsche turret, which had, everybody knows in World of Tanks, had that curve on the bottom of the mantlet, which uh, you could, what's known as trap shotting. Uh, the mouse actually has this as well. If you look at this curve right here on the front, if a shot hits the underside of that, it can ricochet down and penetrate the roof of the hull, which is a very big uh, weakness. So after the 45 miles of Porsche, which some of them actually did see combat in Normandy, believe it or not, some of them actually got taken out by plunging fire from M10 tank destroyers. That's uh, it's quite an opportunity. Now, I'm not sure if it was actually plunging fire. It was probably uh, the M10 shot at the underside of the mantlet and it pierced the top of the hull. I haven't been able to find uh, reports detailed enough to prove that. So if anybody can share this with uh, the channel known as Mark Felton Productions or Military History, His History Visualized, uh, that guy is a friend of the Chieftain. So if you guys can share that with him, he might be able to pull up a thing or two of it. But... So, going back to the mouse, this was supposed to be the biggest of all tanks that would be able to withstand hits from anything. And I mean, talking up to the Russian 122mm D25T gun. So, anyway, now you're probably wondering, what exactly is with this? Well, so the Panzer 8 mouse was the biggest tank ever built. It weighed however many tons, as it said. And there were two versions. Now, pulling it up, the first version... In fact, actually, I'll pull, show this in the book that I have. As you look at the picture on the bottom of the page, that is the mouse V1. Now, what this was, was this was just a mouse hull with an armored casemate on the top to represent a turret. Okay? The second one was mouse V2. which had the actual turret. This was the version that was w the Germans were worried about that the Russians were going to capture. In fact, supposedly the story is is that they were preparing the second version of the mouse to be ready for the Battle of Berlin. You shall not pass! Now, where were they testing this? On the map I'm pulling up, this is showing the testing range of Kumersdorf, which is near Berlin. The problem with this was the mouse was just so heavy, they were not going to be able to get it ready for the Battle of Berlin in time. So what did they do? Here's the picture. Yeah, the Germans blew it up. So when the Russians came and found this giant tank, what they decided to do was they took the V1 hull and mated it with the V2 turret. This is the tank that we see in the Kubinka Tank Museum in Moscow nowadays, which, of course, the Russians are going to be completely rebuilding so they can see the mouse actually move. Now, the problem was for the mouse is there are so few bridges in Europe that could actually support its weight. The King Tiger was pushing the limits because in the Battle of the Bulge, when they were coming to the, uh, French, uh, the Belgian town of Stavolo, that, that bridge there was having a hard time holding the weight of a 77-ton tank. It got even worse when they brought in the Tiger, which was a 79-ton tank destroyer. Uh, so what they decided to do with the mouse was they decided to develop a snorkel system, which was they would watertight all the engine grating, as you see on the top of the hull here. They would waterproof that and put a big breathing tube up so these would be able to ford the deep rivers of Europe. And of course, they had to the the Russians had to get this back to Kubinka as well, and that's what proved very troubling because this tank is just massive. So, what do we have for what's that? What are the engines? That's a good question because I looked this up. Many sources say multiple, and that is actually true. So, what this was was the. The first model had a what was known as a Mercedes-Benz MB509 V12 petrol engine that produced 1,080 horsepower. Well, 
they wanted it to be faster, and of course, they managed to come up with another version. They came up with the Mercedes-Benz MV, excuse me, MB 517V12, which was a diesel engine, and that produced 1,200 horsepower. Unfortunately, for a tank this big, it didn't really increase the top speed at all. In fact, there, there are still disputes, and according to the book, yeah, over level ground, this thing could still not reach more than 20 kilometers an hour, or 12.4 miles an hour. Heck, I remembered that, but I wanted to just double check so I don't say anything wrong, because as I know, sources can be disputed. But yeah, so, pulling the armor model back up, this is the reason why it was so slow, okay? The hull had 220 millimeters of armor on the front, and it had 200 millimeters on the, or excuse me, I just said that completely wrong. It had 200 millimeters of armor on the front, and 180 millimeters on the sides, and 150 millimeters on the rear of the hull. The turret was even thicker, with 220 millimeters on the front, 200 millimeters at the side, and 200 millimeters at the rear. Now, see, if anybody has seen videos of the mouse at Kubinka, they have armor indentations on the front. That's where they did fire tests. According to Russian sources, one of them claims that one of the hits on the front of the hull is from a 122 millimeter shell from an IS-2. Well, still, sources still have to prove that. Because so far, there have been no Russian army uh, sources that say that. And the Germans say that there was no way that the mouse saw any combat. Now, if you're wondering about this giant drum on the back, this is the, fuel, this is the external extra fuel tank. Because you gotta remember, this thing basically guzzled fuel. And, of course, it was extremely powerful with its armaments. Its main armament was a 128mm uh, KWK-44 L55, basically the same gun that was on the Jagdtiger. The secondary gun, which is right here, this is a KWK-75, excuse me, a 75mm KWK-44 L36.5 gun. I'm pretty sure that's basically the same gun as on the Hetzer. Anybody want to uh, confirm that, feel free. And, of course, if we look about right over here, this little slit, that would have also been for the coaxial 7.92mm MG34 general purpose machine gun. Now, you're probably thinking, that little slit is the gunner's sight. No, it's not. This is the gunner's sight, okay? So, just to get that out of the way. Now... Many people often wonder, with the mouse, what would it have been had that tank actually made it to Berlin? Well, there are many sources that dispute what actually would have happened if the mouse managed to make it to Berlin. But basically, they all come down to the same conclusion. It would have scared the living hell out of the Russians because even their 122 millimeter would not have been able to penetrate the front of this vehicle. However, you have to understand, you gotta remember, the front armor of the King Tiger was 170 millimeters thick, and the Russians had combat between their heavy tanks and the King Tigers, and the King Tigers managed to get their butts whooped by getting their frontal armor penetrated by these super heavy 122mm shells. And also, the duel between the King Tiger and the Super Pershing in, the, in Dessau in 1945, the Super Pershing's armor, that shell was actually tested to penetrate 305 millimeters of rolled homogeneous steel armor sloped at 30 degrees at 100 yards. That means that that 
shell from a Super Pershing's gun would have penetrated a King Tiger's frontal hull or turret. Turret easier because even though it was 180 millimeters, it was 180 millimeters flat. And as I did say, the sides of the mouse hull were 180 millimeters thick, flat. And you have to look at the anatomy of the mouse. Much of the mouse inside is nothing but engine and ammo storage. So, yeah, basically one good hit to the side will basically destroy that tank. Well, I wouldn't say destroy it, but it's going to start a lot of fires. As you know, it's engine, fuel tanks, excuse me, and ammo racks. So basically saying, it would scare the hell out of anybody who went into combat against it, but it would only prove to be a stopgap measure, especially due to the fact that if air power comes into play, this thing is a sitting duck for air attacks, just like the famed uh, German Schwerer Gustav, the Schwerer Eisenbahn, the railway gun that was 31.5 inches in diameter bore. But, yeah, and I can't wait to actually see the actual mouse in move, uh, being on the move again. Which reminds me, if anybody ever wondered how Kubinka got started with that, the museum was actually basically just built around the mouse, because it's just too big. And as you know, next to it is the Karl the Mosakal, the Karl Mortar, the Karl Gerata. Now, that one's claimed by the Russians to be Adam. Well, Adam wasn't captured by the Russians. That's actually Zil. And they just named it Adam, so technically I think they may want to go back and spray that thing again and actually put it its actual name. Because these are super heavy vehicles, and you can't just move them like that. So, yeah, that's basically what the mouse is, and nobody has ever tried to build a tank that large again. Because it's just a waste of, in my opinion, it's a waste of materials, it's a waste of time, and it just comes from the megalomaniac mind of Hitler's psyche. So, now for the next video, which is going to be coming out tomorrow... I encourage everybody who sees this video, please go into the description box, little down arrow underneath the video, and vote for the next tank. Please do not just comment. I need you guys to vote for this. Because we cannot just keep going with videos with just one or two votes. So, RJ Nagel 2000 is the reigning champion with two votes for it twice. So if anybody wants to try and win and try and get the next champion, I encourage you guys to share it. So hopefully, I'm hoping Mr. Batwolf, you'll share this with the Shenanigan Battalion. And anybody who plays World of Tanks, I gotta tell you, when you get to play either for or against the mouse, get ready for a showdown. So this is wraps up the next part of the pre-cruise vlog, and I will catch you guys tomorrow. So Let's get voting, folks. I can't wait to see the results.